Hi everyone, and welcome to our lecture. My name is Christian, and I'm pleased to announce the next speakers. Representing Special Olympics Belgium, an organization aiming for social integration of people with a mental disability by utilizing sports. First, we would like to welcome Annelise Maté, a coordinator of the Healthy Athletes Program at Special Olympics Belgium. Following that, Thibaut, a Special Olympics athlete and athlete ambassador, you will join us and answer some interesting personal questions. And if you have any questions yourself, be sure to leave them in the chat box so we can propose them to our speakers. I'm now going to leave the word to Annelise Maté. Thank you for tuning in and enjoy the lecture. Hello, everybody, and welcome for the nice introduction. So I'm going to start to tell you a little bit more about Special Olympics. It's an organization worldwide which is uh, set up by Eunice Kennedy Schreiber. And you can hear it already on the name Kennedy. It's indeed family of uh, President John F. Kennedy. Now, John F. Kennedy and Eunice, they had uh, another sister called Rosemary, and she had an intellectual disability. And uh, Eunice, she thought, it's not nice that my sister is not welcome in the community, in the society, and that's why she started organizing uh, sport camps in her backyard. Um, and actually, from that backyard sport camp, the um, organization of Special Olympics was founded, and now 52 years later, we are a worldwide organization aiming, like Christian already told, uh, aiming to in, uh, work around inclusion for people with intellectual disability through sports. We are recognized by the International Olympic Committee, so we are actually one of the three Olympic families. Like the Olympic Games, like the Paralympic Games, we have uh, the Special Olympics. And like I said, worldwide organization 193 countries that we are reaching uh, and in all those countries you have a national special olympics organization and by that way we are reaching 5.5 million athletes now i told you we have the olympics we have the special olympics and we have the paralympics but it's very important that there is a difference between the two organizations, Special Olympics and Paralympics. Special Olympics is mostly for people with an intellectual disability. It is possible that on a second hand, besides that intellectual disability, they also have a physical disability. But it is only athletes with an IQ under 75 can participate in the Special Olympics. On the other hand, we have the Paralympics, and Paralympics is for people mostly with a physical disability, but again, the last few years um, and the last Paralympic Games, in a few sports, there were also people with an intellectual disability that participated. That's one big difference, the target group. Other uh, differences are that in Special Olympics, we have athletes of all levels. So that means that we have an athlete um, who runs a marathon and very fast, much faster than any of you uh, will do. But on the other hand, we also have athletes that go into the water with, um, with another person just to help them and swim 50 meters. So we have really all the levels, while at Paralympics it's athletes of the higher uh, level, of course. In Special Olympics, it's most important to train regularly, to uh, participate. That's what we want. We want healthy athletes that are doing sports. And we also have a system which is called divisioning. So that means that actually before the competition starts, we are going to ask all our athletes for their results. For example, 100 meter sprints. And then we are going based on those results, based on their fastest time, we are going to division them in uh, categories. So actually every athlete in a certain category has more or less the same time and therefore has more or less the same chance on winning that gold medal. That are the big differences because in Paralympics, of course, winning is very important and you have those qualification with the quarter final, half final and then the finals. So I'm going to start uh, with a video and I just want to ask you to have a good look on the different type of at the athletes because 
ID, it's very broad and you will see it also in the videos when you look so at those athletes, you will see that there is really more a big difference uh, between uh, the level and how this intellectual uh, disability uh, shows. So then the video can, can start. Kennedy, it's indeed family of uh, President John F. Kennedy. Now, John F. Kennedy and Eunice had uh, another sister called Rosemary, and she had an intellectual disability. And uh, Eunice, she thought, it's not nice that my sister is not welcome in the community, in the society, and that's why she started organizing uh, sport camps in her backyard. Um, and actually, from that backyard sport oh camp, wow. the um, organization of Special Olympics was founded, and now 52 years later, we are a worldwide organization aiming, like Christian already told, uh, aiming to in, uh, work around inclusion for people with intellectual disability through sports. In her backyard, um, and actually from the backyard sport camp, the um, organization of Special Olympics was founded, and now 52 years later, we are a worldwide organization aiming, like Christian already told, uh, aiming to in, uh, work around inclusion for people with intellectual disability through sports. In her backyard, um, and actually from the backyard, sport camp, the um, organization of Special Olympics was founded, and now 52 years later, we are a worldwide organization The silence is in quiet, and it feels like it's getting hard to breathe. And I know you feel like dying, but I promise we would take the world to its feet. That we have in each other. So I think you have a really good idea now of what is Special Olympics, who are our athletes, and especially what warmth and what joy uh, do our athletes uh, show. Now I want to tell you a little bit about Special Olympics Belgium. So that's the organi organization where I and uh, Atli, um, Audrey and uh, Thibault work for. And, and Audrey and Ad uh, Thibault, they will uh, come in later in the presentation. So 
is of course the same target group that we aim for. We want to reach people with an intellectual disability and offer them sports and true sports. We want to empower them and we want to include them in the society. Special Olympics Belgium was uh, founded in 1979 and very special for our organization in comparison with the other countries is that every year we organize national games. I will come back on those national games, what it is uh, in a later uh, slide. What we also do is every four years, like you have the Paralympic uh, Summer and Winter Games and Olympic Winter and Summer Games, we also have that at Special Olympics. So our athletes from Belgium go every four years to either a World Summer Game or a World Winter Game. And there's also some protection uh, for the organization from the Belgium Olympic and Interfederal Committee and also our Majesty, the King and Queen of Belgium. Now I want to go to some numbers. So in Belgium there are 165,000 people with an intellectual disability. So that's already a big number. But if you count with that also the parents of those people, the, the teachers, the brothers, the sisters, then you actually are reaching 1 million people directly and indirectly in Belgium on a population of about 11 uh, million people. So it's a lot of people that are uh, involved uh, in this uh, intellectual disability but still there's a big taboo and that is something that we as an organi organization are also trying to break down. In Belgium we are reaching at the moment 19,173 athletes and also a lot of volunteers because for those national games we need so many volunteers, it's almost, I think, 6,000 people uh, during those four days. So 11,000, which then also 6,000 on the national games and a few more on uh, smaller day activities, for example. And the worldwide numbers, I already um, told you about that. So that's five million and a half people uh, of athletes that we reach worldwide. So our object objective, I already talked about, we want to promote the integration and develop development of people with intellectual disability through sports and that in a sustainable better manner. We want to break down the taboo that I told you about. We want to reach also in 2020, 20,000 athletes um, or people with an ID. We want to make sure that they are already doing sport and are being active and we want to organize fantastic events. And about those national games, so normally we should have organized our 38th edition this year, but due to Corona we had to cancel it. Um, but a few numbers on those national games, so it's four days, we are reaching 3,400 athletes, 1,200 coaches, and it's actually our athletes are coming from uh, clubs, sport clubs, uh, but also institutions um, and so on, and about 1,800 volunteers per day, 20 sports. But it's much more than sport, like you have in the Paralympics and the Olympic Games, you are starting with a big opening ceremony, at the end we have a closing ceremony, we go uh, with the Olympic flame and we run through the cities where we are at that moment uh, to show uh, the Olympic flame that's the torch run um, and then of course there's a healthy athletes program and that's uh, the program especially that I want to talk to you today uh, about just to give you an idea about our sports and very important is that some of them are unified sports and Thibaut um, the athlete that will come in later he's actually also doing one of those unified sports so he will tell you all about it what it is exactly and then the Healthy Athletes Program. So actually, a fact, I want to start with that. People with intellectual disabilities are at increased risk for several preventable health conditions and experience higher mortality rates. So this is actually the reason why uh, Special Olympics International started the Healthy Athletes Program. We see that in this population is vulnerable, population there are a lot of medical problems and that those problems often remain undiagnosed so it's often on that healthy athletes program that we offer during those national games that medical problems are being diagnosed for the first time and i just want to 
give you some some numbers of an article that was published in the Lancet. Um, so they um, researched the deaths of 247 people uh, with ID in England, and we saw actually that indeed, like I said in the previous slide, the mortality rates are much higher than in general population. So that's the first actually that you see that 22 percent of those 247 people are actually dying before the age of 50, while in the general population it's only 9 percent. So that's already a big difference. Median age is around 64 years old, and we see that there's a difference between female and male. So the, the male people with ID, they usually die 13 years younger than in general population, while for the female it's even 20 years younger. So I think those are already numbers that's very important to take in your back of your mind when you're in the future treating people with ID. Um, it's very important uh, to have attention for that. And I think I want to show you now a next video. Uh, it was made by uh, Special Olympics International about inclusive health. So I think that's a nice uh, introduction as well to the Healthy Athletes program that I will talk to you more about in a minute. Players have intellectual disabilities or ID, but they can take on any athlete. Still, a main challenge for these athletes with ID takes place in the health and wellness arena. The reality is a disparity, a real gap between the health of those without intellectual disabilities and those with ID. The gap includes access to quality health care for chronic conditions like heart disease or preventing diseases with vaccines. Sometimes patients like me aren't good at expressing our symptoms. And sometimes doctors aren't trained to understand those of us with IV. For me and my teammates, doctor's visits are often too short. In our lives, are often too short because of delays in prevention and treatment. My teammate and I will likely die 16 years younger than the general population. 16! The solution is inclusion. Get in there. Yeah. Special Olympics has provided 1.9 million health screens and trained over 220,000 health professionals. We're making sure that those with ID have year-round access to healthcare, prevention, and wellness programs. These victories of inclusion for people with ID are a triumph for human rights. So people with ID need your help. Choose to include me at your doctor's office. Include me on your sports team and include me in your community. So I will reach my full potential and inspire others. Okay, hands in. The revolution is inclusion. So again, I think in that video, there are certainly a couple of uh, take home messages for you to take uh, as uh, the doctors for the future so make sure that once you are there uh, think about those things that you have seen in this video the healthy athletes program so like i said it's a program that we offer during our national games and it's actually a program which was founded by special olympics international so they did that with a lot of different experts always in the field of a specific um, discipline. So we have in Belgium eight different disciplines. The first is Fun Fitness. Fun Fitness is actually a program which is run by physiotherapists, by students in physiotherapy, and they screen the general condition of the athlete, flexibility, strength, and balance. Then we have Healthy Hearing, 
for that program we work together with audiologists, students in audiology, but also ENT specialists. And um, of course there we test the hearing and uh, the ears. Opening eyes, we screen uh, the visual system. Healthy Body uh, is a program which is uh, set up in Belgium. Um, so it's only in Belgium that we offer Healthy Body program and it's done by osteopaths. So it's an osteopathic examination of the body structures and tissues. Special smiles are the dentists, the students in dentistry. So the mount and the tooth screening and also the brushing habits are being um, checked for. Then we have podologists in fit feet. So it's not only the feet that they look, but they also do a gait analysis. They look at the skin of the feet, the nails, the joints, and very important also the shoe, sh the shoe size. Then we have health promotion, which is uh, more an educational screening program, but also they check for BMI, uh, blood pressure, uh, but they also check for, for example, healthy eating, um, hydration, uh, sun protection. So that's advice, very practical advice that is given to the athletes. And then diabetes prevention, which is also again a program which is only uh, run in Belgium. We set it up in 2019 and um, there we check actually the risk of uh, type 2 diabetes. And so in general, why do we do this program? Uh, like I said, there are a lot of medical uh, problems uh, in people with ID m that occur much frequently than in a general population. But also those problems are often not recognized, not recognized by the athlete himself by his parents, by the coach, his, his peers. And it's actually a number of reasons why that happens. Uh, first of all, sometimes the athlete can communicate that he's in pain. Sometimes he doesn't know that it's actually not normal, that his foot is um, being painful, although he has a, a, a smaller shoe size, but he doesn't know it, that it's, uh, it's not normal to feel uh, these things. But what we also sometimes see is like the parents, like I said before, that they don't recognize that there is a problem. We had, for example, um, a mother um, that said, okay, my child, she's not uh, engaging with her coach. She's not doing um, the activities like, like the other uh, athletes are doing. And she said, that's because she has an intellectual disability. But in fact, we, uh, we saw during those testing that she had a hearing problem. So the mother said it's due to the intellectual disability that she's not participating, but in reality, the child had a, a hearing problem and therefore she couldn't understand the coach. And that was the real reason why she didn't participate. Um, so a lot of medical problems. And of course we want, we are still focusing on sports. So we want fitter athletes at the starting start of the competition and therefore a fitter athlete will also be a healthier athlete. And of course, all those uh, screenings, they are offered during the national games, but they are all free and athletes actually can choose if they want to participate and come to those screenings or not. And then we are doing those screenings already since 2003. So that means that we have gathered a lot of data. We really have a good understanding of how the medical condition of people with ID is, and we have a good idea of what are the frequent um, medical problems that they encounter. And with those data, we want to go uh, to the peers, to the parents, to the coaches, but also to policy makers um, to create awareness about it and to make sure that something is being done. And that something is being done, so to increase the healthcare for people with ID, I will explain uh, in a later slide when we are talking about the Special Smiles program. Of course, for the athletes, we want to make sure if there is a problem, uh, that those problems are being identified. And what we also do is in every discipline, we give advice to them, very specific advice. Um, and if necessary, we will give them a letter uh, to make sure that um, after the games, they will go to a specialist to further uh, follow up uh, what we have identified. 
And another specific objective of this uh, program is for our volunteers. So, so I said already we are working together with students and also professionals of a certain discipline, for example, from fitness with physiotherapy students and physiotherapists. But we know actually that in general, uh, the topic of ID is not very frequently offered in a curriculum. Same for the medical uh, students, so th that's the left picture on, on the bottom of the slide. We know um, that ID is not enough um, represented in the curriculum. So people, therefore, they don't really know how to interact with them. They are often also afraid of people with ID. And through this Healthy Athletes program, which is very low threshold and very easy going, um, both volunteers get to get used to people with ID. They know, they learn how to interact with them. Um, and at the end, actually, they take all those, what they, what they have learned with them for their future career. And we see really that in the end, when they are, um, students are having their own practice that they are much more confident about if if they having a, pe a, per a patient with ID in front of them uh, to treat them. So we really see very a lot of beneficial effects for those volunteers as well. Like I said, it's a cooperation with Healthy Athletes program of the universities, the colleges of higher education, and professional associations. And uh, we also work together with service clubs, uh, companies, the governmental institution. So we really have uh, the whole package of, uh, of partnerships. Now I want to go uh, through some findings because I think for, for you guys, those findings are, will be very striking as well. And I think it's very important to take um, those numbers with you when you're working in the future with uh, people with ID. So for example, for Fit Feet, uh, they have um, researched about 4,000 people with um, ID, athletes of us, that came to the Fit Feet program. And we saw actually that one on two of them, one of two of the athletes that come to the Fit Feet screening need follow up for some kind of reason. And we'll go in that uh, a little bit further. But very important as well is uh, we make a difference between follow up, which is should be done, but it's not that urgent, and urgent uh, follow up. And e also one on two of those athletes needed an urgent follow up. So that means that either they have to leave the competition and really go to the doctor or a hospital for immediate care, or they can finish sometimes the competition, but then it's really important that in the next couple of days uh, they have that uh, follow up. One on two, uh, one on five of those athletes had needed that uh, urgent follow up. And I'm just going to show you some picture. I'm not a pathologist, so I, I can explain everything, but I think you will see on those pictures that are pictures that are taken during those fit feet screenings that we see a whole range of, of problems um, at the fit feet uh, stand. And on the left, you will see also a little bit the different per percentages percentage um, of the different uh, problems that we see. And I want to uh, go in a little bit deeper on the shoe size. So 42%, so almost one on two again, has a problem with the shoe size. And it means um, not just a shoe size, which is one or two sizes too small or too, too, too big, but sometimes it's even four to five uh, shoe sizes uh, too big or too small. We had, for example, an athlete um, that came with her sister to the Fit Feet screening uh, with a shoe size 35. She does the screening and at the end, it actually turns out that she had a shoe size 39 on the left and, and 40 on the right. So actually for a couple of years, she was wearing shoe sizes four or five sizes too small. And the reason for this was that the sister told uh, she was buying the shoes and she just didn't have realized that when the athlete was growing, also his feet were growing. So. He was just stuck in the same shoe size in the in the beginning. 
And of course, when you go with an athlete uh, to the shoe shop, shop and he gets, for example, if it's a girl, pinky, girly uh, shoes, then she says, yes, yes, they are fine, but actually they, uh, they weren't, unfortunately. And again, I just want to uh, give you an idea about the type of problems that we see in our population, in our athletes with ID comparison with the general population and then again you see that the problems they have are a much more frequently uh, seen than in a, in a general population. Then fun fitness, um, so they do the strength, the balance, uh, flexibility and again you see that in very high numbers there are a lot of problems uh, on, on this field again, uh, on the strength and the balance and so on. Health promotion, uh, we see a lot of overweight, a lot of obesity, uh, also lone obesity low bone density and um, exposure to smoking on the second hand then. And it's actually because of those reasons of overweight and obesity that we decided we had to do something about diabetes. Uh, so that was actually the starting point of, of setting up that diabetes uh, prevention program. Healthy hearing, uh, very important of course, because if there is a hearing loss, it has an impact on so many different levels, on the speech, on the language, the communication with people. There will be sometimes misunderstanding, or like I said in the example of the mom, um, no participation in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the trading, uh, so social isolation it can lead to, and in the long end it can also influence cognition, behavior, and even uh, lead to depression and dementia. So what we see a lot um, of problems is about excessive EREX. We know that in this population they really make a lot of um, EROX, uh, much more than in the general population and that is why we have the ENT specialist on site as well during those screenings because he or she, the doctor, they will usually first go to that doctor, to the ENT specialist, he will look into the ear if there is excessive EROX which is a lot in a lot of the cases um, the case um, then uh, the earwax will be removed and um, then they will go to the to the aud audiologist and the students for further testing so that the testing is also much more reliable what we also see when they come to the ENT specialist is foreign objects and for example, uh, the left uh, pictures is actually the top of pencil. So what happened, um, the athlete, he, her ear was itching and she took a pencil to rem release the, the, the itching a little bit. But what she didn't have realized was that the top of the pencils had broken off and they had, be had stuck in the ear. And it's actually on that healthy athlete screening at the ENT specialist that those three pencil tops were discovered. And I think you can imagine all, if those had been stuck there for quite a long time, it would have caused a lot of inflammation, pain, and maybe in the long end, even hearing loss. The second picture is actually the top of um, a little ear when you are listening to music, th those things that you put in your ear that again had been stuck in the ear canal of one of our athletes. Also on the middle ear uh, we see a lot of problems much more uh, frequently than in general population and the same is actually the truth for uh, hearing loss. Now for hearing loss I want to add as well that 2% um, of our athletes has a hearing aid while in fact 12% should wear them. So a lot of people who can be helped with a hearing aid are not wearing them yet. And what we also see is of those 2%, 37 is not wearing them correctly. So that can be that there's, for example, a flat battery and that they, they have them in, but actually they're not working well. So this is really a big problem, again, that we see and um, encounter with our athletes. Healthy body. Uh, we see, for example, that 4.8% 
needed acute medical care and sometimes had to quit the competition. And again, for 86%, it was their first diagnosis. So that's what I said before, that a lot of the medical problems that we see with our athletes, often it's the first time um, that they are being discovered during those screenings. We see uh, some cardiac insufficiency, but the last one I want to make sure, uh, sh sure that I mention as well is the rib fracture. We see that sometimes, and in this case, it was actually an athlete that um, was going for his judo competition. So you can imagine an athlete with already an existing rib fracture and that is going to go uh, in a couple of hours to judo. Of course, we had to say in this case that unfortunately his games were over. And I want to tell you uh, also the Healthy Body Program, why it's uh, so important for us, because um, often the communication is a bit difficult for the athletes. And actually through the Healthy Body Program, without asking uh, very difficult questions, uh, we can find out if there are certain uh, problems. Opening eyes. Um, so 15% never had ever in their life an eye exam before. So sometimes, again, like I said, it's the first time that things are being checked up um, during our national games. Some eye diseases that come, come uh, often uh, more frequently, 10%. And 23.5% needed a new pair of glass correction. So what that means is that thanks to the support of um, two partners, Estelor and Safilor, we are able to provide an athlete that comes to us and is in need of a, of a new pair of glasses, we are able to provide that to them. And just to give you an idea about the visual acu acu acuity, so one um, is a picture on the left. On the right you have, uh, for example, a zero pound tree. And we did have athletes with a zero pound tree that came to us. And during the testing, it's, it, was it was shown that they needed a corrective uh, pair of glasses. We gave it to them and we can give them their side back to a score of uh, one pound zero. So I just want to make sure that uh, you know that that this program is very important and that we can really uh, change the life of those people uh, with ID. Special smiles, what we see is a lot of uh, gum inflammation, uh, dental decay uh, sometimes, and also uh, tooth injury. And what I said before was that we want to change um, the healthcare for people with ID in the end, because we see all those problems and we know that they need more care and uh, need, for example, so a longer duration time when they come to a doctor, which was shown in, uh, in the video. And actually, thanks to the results of the Special Smiles program, uh, they work together with our National Institute for Health and Disability Insurance. So for the people in Belgium, RISIF and INAMI. Um, and thanks to those results, uh, we were able to get some extra reimbursements for people with ID, for example, up to four, four times a year, they can go to a dentist to have that checked, which is of course different um, than for people in a general population. Diabetes prevention, like I said, it's a program that we set up only in 2019, so we don't have too much findings yet, but what we see is that 32% of the athletes, and I think it was about uh, 500 athletes that came to those screening, um, had a slightly increased risk of type 2 diabetes, while one out of 10 had really an increased risk. And of course, for those, we are going to refer them to a general practitioner to get extra testing and um, to uh, sometimes, in some cases, make the diagnosis of uh, type 2 diabetes. Very uh, hot topic, and I think it's uh, very important as well, just to give you some idea about what's the relation between COVID-19 and uh, ID and intellectual, intellectual disability. These are actually numbers of uh, colleagues in uh, the Netherlands of, of the facility of Sterker op eigen benen. And every now and then they are uh, update, updating those numbers. Uh, so the first part you see a little bit um, 
who is that uh, with the population that they have been uh, tested and researched. And then we actually see in the highlights that um, there is not a lot of big difference whether the person has a mild ID, a moderate ID of a very severe ID, the numbers of um, COVID-19 are more or less the same in each of those three categories. What we also see is if there is overweight, so BMI over 25, then we see that 52% uh, of them had a confirmed uh, COVID-19, 64% uh, were deceased, and we see also a certain uh, number of uh, other uh, medical conditions, uh, and uh, you can see on the slide uh, how many times uh, Hi everyone, welcome back to the stream. Sorry for the brief interruption. Uh, we had some technical issues, our stream crashed, but now we're back. Um, and Lisa's presentation was almost over, so we will be going um, to the interview with Thibaut, uh, our athlete, um, in, a, in a few seconds. Um, so thank you if you're still uh, watching. Um, well, then I will give the word to uh, Thibaut. Thank you. So I'm just going to explain very quickly how we are going to do it because uh, Thibaut does speak a few words English, but uh, mostly uh, it's going to be in Dutch. So I will ask the question in Dutch, but on the slide you will see the questions in English. Thibaut will answer in Dutch and then uh, Audrey, our colleague, she will uh, make sure that also uh, the, the students that uh, doesn't speak Dutch that uh, they will also understand it, so she will take care of the translation. So, I'm going to start with my first question. Thibault, stel jezelf eventjes voor. Hello, my name is Thibault and I am athlete ambassador from Special Olympics Belgium and my sport is unified sailing. Okay, unified sailing, leg that is out. Want ik heb daarnet ook gezegd tegen de studenten, unified, wat betekent dat? En wat betekent unified sailing? Unified is eigenlijk samen sporten met uh, mensen met een verstandelijke beperking en mm -hmm. mensen met zonder een beperking. Ja, oké. Okay. So, actually, unified <laughs> sailing is uh, when there is a pair with uh, an athlete uh, with intellectual disability and an athlete without any dis uh, intellectual disability. Oké, okay, perfect. Um, de volgende vraag. Waarom vind je het belangrijk dat je Unified zeilen kan doen? Je kunt van elkaar uh, bijleren. Uh, mm -hmm. Zo leer ik uh, veel van Matthias. En ook langs de andere kant leert hij ook iets omgaan hoe dat mensen met een verstandelijke beperking in elkaar zitten. Mm -hmm. So he finds that actually playing a sport together, they learn a lot from each other. Uh, they work as a, as a pair and yeah, each each of them has to learn something to the other one. Okay, and how vaak train you and waar train you dan juist? Sowieso als er uh, wereldspelen zijn en wij mogen met zeilen mee, dan trainen wij gewoon winter en zomer en wij trainen op het Gauwgeweel hier in Antwerpen en uh, wij trainen ook op fysiek. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, Actually, when there are some uh, world games, they have to train even in winter as in summer. And they are uh, training here somewhere um, near Anver uh, Antwerp. Uh, and they have uh, also to train uh, physically. Okay, so the volgende vraag heeft uh, Thibaut eigenlijk al meteen geantwoord, dus daar gaan we uh, verder door. Um, nu, vind je het belangrijk dat je kan sporten in het algemeen, Thibaut? Ja, sowieso uh, is het belangrijk om te sporten. Je blijft beweging, je leert uh, in de wereld sowieso nieuwe vrienden uh, kennen en eigenlijk is het wel belangrijk. Hij vindt het heel erg belangrijk. Spelen een sport geeft ook de kans om met vrienden te maken. En ja, hij vindt het heel erg belangrijk voor iedereen, zelfs mensen met intellectuele disability. Mm -hmm. disability. 
En Thibaut, je hebt een aantal medailles uh, rond je nek hangen. Misschien moet je ze maar een klein beetje meer naar de camera richten. Dan kunnen ze zien hoe groot een medaille dat, dat wel is. Uh, welke medaille vind je het belangrijkste? Welke vind je het leukste dat je die behaald hebt? Ja, eigenlijk alle twee. De eerste is in 2015 in L.A. Dat was eigenlijk onze allereerste wereldspeler, samen met uh, Special Olympics uh, België ook. En de tweede is eigenlijk uh, die van vorig jaar en die was in Abu Dhabi voor nog eens onze titel te kunnen verdedigen. De twee waren uh, very are very important. Uh, the first one was in uh, 2015, I think. Uh, it was in LA, and uh, it was the first time he went as Belgium SOB, uh, Special Olympics Belgian, and so it was his first title for golden medal. And uh, the second is from last year. Um, it was in Abu Dhabi, and they had to defend uh, their title, and uh, they succeeded it. Mm -hmm. So maybe I just want to uh, add to that. Uh, so Thibaut hasn't said it, but actually he's a, a world champion in sailing, and he he's won it two times a year. So world champion here uh, with you today, guys. <laughs> um, yeah, you have then the gold medal you won for LA in 2015. Daarvoor heb je ook een heel mooi FKD gekregen in België. Ja, sowieso heb ik, uh, ben ik uh, eigenlijk jachtman van het jaar geworden. Eigenlijk kun je dat vergelijken met de gouden schoen voor de beste voetballer van ons land. En uh, dat is toch wel belangrijk, ook dat ze toch zien dat mensen met een verstandelijke beperking ook top sport kunnen doen. So, uh, in 2015, uh, he had the chance to be recognized as the uh, Yacht Man of the Year. Uh, it is a bit like the golden shoe for the best footballer. And uh, I find it important that even for people with intellectual disability, there is some recognition of very top sports uh, athletes. Mm -hmm. En je bent atleet ambassadeur. Uh, normaal zou je het gezicht van de Spelen zijn geweest voor de Spelen uh, in Antwerpen in 2020, die we door corona hebben moeten annuleren, jammer ja. genoeg. Maar we hebben dan virtuele Spelen georganiseerd en daar had jij ook wel een rol. Wat heb je daar allemaal voor uh, moeten doen? Ja, sowieso was ik uh, de eerste die daar de vlam uh, mocht doorgeven eigenlijk en dan mocht ik samen met de burgemeester Bart de Wever uh, de vlam gaan aansteken, de officiële vlam op de grote markt in Antwerpen. Dus, uh, en ik was eigenlijk daar ook een beetje het gezicht voor. So, um, he was a bit the face of uh, the games because he could uh, be the first one to give uh, the flame to uh, the torch flame. Uh, during the torch run, and he could, um, with the burgemeester uh, from Antwerp, um, he could, uh, yeah, uh, light the big flame, the, the the very big one for the start of virtual. As the Special Olympics Belgium Games. Mm -hmm. And again, I want to add something because Thibaut, he hasn't said it, but he has done a very important thing as well because together with his unified partner, he has also given a very motivational speech uh, to all of the athletes. Eh? That's correct. Eh? Yeah. Now, nog één vraagje rond het sportief gedeelte. Dan heb je nog sportieve doelen, want je hebt al twee gouden medailles, twee keer wereldkampioen. Heb je er nog? Heb je nog doelen? Ja, misschien sowieso uh, in 2023 de Special Olympics Road Games in Berlijn toch nog mee te maken. Um, dus dat is nog zo eentje dat we misschien kunnen meemaken. <laughs> so, hoping corona isn't there anymore. Uh, in 2023, the following games are in Berlin. And uh, he hopes to be able to defend his title of golden medal uh, with um, uh, unified sailing again. Oké. Okay. Nu, we hebben het sportieve gedeelte een beetje gehad, uh, maar je hebt dus ook een verstandelijke beperking. Hoe ben je dat te weten gekomen dat je, dat je die, die beperking had? Dat is eigenlijk in het eerste leerjaar op een gewone school. Ik ging eigenlijk naar een gewone school en daar hebben ze ontdekt dat ik het uh, moeilijk had met lezen en schrijven en dat we toch beslist hebben om naar een buitengewoon onderwijs te gaan. 
So uh, first, he went to a usual uh, school, and um, he was uh, in his first year when they found out he had some problem with writing and reading. So um, they decided to, uh, to re redirect him to a special school education. Mm -hmm. En je, je zei, uh, je hebt vooral problemen met, met lezen en schrijven. Hoe zit dat daar nu op, op vandaag? Hoe is dat verbeterd? Hoe, hoe zit het daarmee? Ja, sowieso dankzij het buitengewoon onderwijs en dankzij Unified Zeeland en Special Olympics België. En daarnaast sinds vorig jaar mee uh, een project bij Antwerp Management. Zo moest ik daar toch wel zelfstandig schrijven en lezen. Dus het Zit er wel terug going. So uh, thanks to a lot of different projects, um, it's uh, unusual uh, special uh, education uh, with a Special Olympics Belgium and with uh, Antwerp Management School uh, project. He has to train it, and uh, so he it's yeah it 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 increases. I think. En je sprak over Antwerp Management School, uh, dus ja, ik vermoed dat je wel werkt. Wat doe je, wat doe je zo van, ja, van werk tijdens, tijdens de week? Hoe, hoe ziet jouw week eruit? Uh, ik werk drie dagen als vrijwilliger bij de stad Mortsel. En dan sinds vorig jaar werk ik ook als uh, vast junior researcher bij Antwerp Management School voor een Europees project waar dat mensen met een verstandelijke beperking in het normaal economie kunnen functioneren. So uh, on one hand, he volunteers at the med, uh, in the city of uh, Mortsel um, in the roads. Um, and on the other hand, uh, he's part of uh, Antwerp Management School um, as a junior researcher. And it is in a project to uh, include uh, people with uh, intellectual disability inside the economic system and inside um, the enterprise. Uh, uh, yeah. Companies. <laughs> Companies, yeah. yeah. Um, nog een laatste vraagje rond dat thema. Uh, Thibaut, hoe ga je om met het feit dat je een verstandelijke beperking hebt? Vroeger, uh, toen ik naar die buitengewoon onderwijs uh, school ging, dan wou ik het zelfs niet aanvaarden. Maar dankzij uh, SOB en mijn sportunified Zeeling en sinds vorig jaar nu AMS, uh, is het eigenlijk aanvaard. Uh, jonger was het really difficult to deal with with it, but thanks to uh, Special Olympics Belgium, thanks to uh, IMS and uh, since last year, and uh, yeah, thanks to sport and everything, uh, it gets better. Nu we hebben het gehad vandaag over het uh, Healthy Athletes programma. Wat vind je ervan? Ja, dat is toch wel belangrijk uh, bij de atleten van Special Olympics, ook in gans de wereld en sowieso uh, in België. Ik ben ook helemaal gescreend door Healthy Athletes, dus ik weet wat dat is. Um, yeah, uh, he thinks that it's, it is very important for uh, any athletes. Uh, from international side or even in the national side it's uh, yeah, important for everybody and you said you have made this program healthy athletes are there any problems uh, diagnosed yeah sowieso had ik uh, uh, bij de oorarts een gewichte verhoogd mm -hmm. verlies en daar hebben ze eigenlijk gezegd van kijk je moet naar de oorarts om dat toch eens te laten checken en dat hebben we ook gedaan en um, de oorarts zei van ja, je hebt een uh, gesmal, een, een klein gehoor, en dus daarom. So, um, he has done the Healthy Athletes program and they found out, the, they thought that the uh, hearing loss but uh, finally when they research a little bit further um, they found out that it was a narrow uh, ear canal and the production of uh, too much earwax. Mm -hmm. um, 
Nu wist je dat op voorhand dat je een gehoorprobleem had, want ik denk dat er ook nog naast dat gehoorprobleem ook op het vlak van de tanden bijvoorbeeld een probleem was. Wist je dat je die problemen had of hoe zat dat juist? Bij mijn oren wist ik het, uh, wisten we het door mijn huisarts. Um, bij de tandarts moesten we sowieso gaan, omdat dat eigenlijk vlak voor Abu Dhabi was. En um, ja, we hebben dat dan toch onder andere genomen. Um, hearing problem was the, the only one, uh, wasn't the only one. There was also a problem with its tooth, uh, tooth decay. Um, and for uh, the hearing, he, know, he knew the problem uh, before going to a healthy athlete program, but not for the tense pro uh, tooth teeth problem. Ja, en aan de andere kant uh, van, de, van de camera zitten allemaal studenten geneeskunde en die later dokter worden. Um, hoe voel jij je tegenover dokters? Hoe was jullie relatie ten opzichte van een dokter en is dat veranderd vroeger ten opzichte van u? Ja, vroeger had ik heel veel schrik van dokters en spuitjes, maar nu dankzij Healthy Athlete is dat helemaal veranderd. En vraag ik ook aan mijn tandarts zelfs, ook aan mijn huisarts, om te weten wat dat ze gaat doen en zo. Ik ben er nu wel geïnteresseerd. Wel. Uh, first, he had a real a big fear of uh, stings, but uh, thanks to uh, the athlete pro uh, program and thanks to uh, every uh, his own experience in it, uh, his interest in it has uh, increased and no he says that he's, he he is quite interested in it en um, eventjes kijken naar de volgende vraag ja dus het healthy athletes program ik heb ook het al eventjes benoemd in de presentatie maar vind jij het belangrijk dat studenten en professionele deelnemen daaraan aan, aan zo'n gezondheidsscreenings dat ze daar als vrijwilliger naartoe komen ja sowieso omdat ze eigenlijk ook van mensen met een verstandelijke beperking leren omgaan. Want die mensen, zoals Kik, zo, die zullen wat schrik hebben in um, dokters. Maar als ze zien dat je alles eigenlijk rustig uitlegt tegen uh, mensen met een verstandelijke beperking, dan zullen ze geen schrik meer hebben. Um. He thinks that uh, it's important to have experience uh, of that because uh, when you take the time to explain it and to um, to show that you are confident in it, um, you can make people with disabil uh, intellectual disability being far less stressed about it. Mm -hmm. En heb je het gevoel dat mensen jou anders behandelen, benaderen, omdat je een, intellect, allee, een verstandelijke beperking hebt? Uh, ja, dankzij het sporten en sowieso mijn vaste werk bij AMS en als atleetambassadeur uh, word ik eigenlijk als een gewone, volwaarde werknemer gebruikt en bij Special Olympics als een gewone topsporter. Ah, so I'm just gonna uh, explain. So he, he's just saying that thanks to the Special Olympics, he feels really that uh, people are treating him there at Special Olympics as a top uh, athlete. Same for IMS, for the Antwerp Management School. He says that he feels again that uh, actually people are not treating him differently, but just treating him as a regular employee of, of, the, of the company. Um, en dan een laatste vraagje om af te sluiten. Um, zoals ik zei tijdens de presentatie, weten soms uh, mensen niet zo goed, hoe moet ik nu gaan communiceren met iemand met een verstandelijke beperking? Heb je daar rond nog, nog tips voor uh, de studenten die aan het luisteren zijn? Ja, gewoon u, uzelf zijn en uh, gewoon alles rustig uitleggen tegen de atleten die daar langskomen bij Healthy Atleet. Um, so he has tip, uh, advices for people who are uh, professional people in health um, sector. So um, it was to good explain. Uh, to good explain, I think. And yeah, just just to to talk slowly, yeah. uh, to talk to him as an athlete, uh, not to his parents that are with him, and just just to yeah. 
to talk uh, to make sure he understands it really good uh, what he has uh, and be yourself be yourself yeah that's again awesome so um, with this question, uh, we came to the end of our presentation. Um, we do hope that you have now a better understanding on the one hand, what is Special Olympics, what is that Healthy Athletes program, but more importantly uh, for you guys um, to have uh, those medical problems and especially the, the high frequency of them, much more than a general population, to take that with you when in the future you uh, have a patient with ID uh, sitting up oppos opposite from you and uh, to just think about uh, a little bit what we have said today and we do hope um, that you now have a better idea also um, what is ID you got to know uh, Thibault you got to see the video you see that there's a big difference uh, and big different in different levels uh, in ID so I just hope um, that you um, really thought it was an interesting topic and uh, that you have some take-home messages for uh, the future to take with you so with this we end our presentation and if there are any questions for me for Audrey or Thibault, um, and if there's still time of course we are happy to to answer them Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, we'll have a short Q&A session now um, because we got some questions in. So um, we'll now be, uh, are going to talk with um, our speakers. Um, well, firstly, you provide um, healthcare for at least, for at least, which is amazing. But in the end, of course, someone has to pay the bill. So how, how, do, you, um, how do you do that? Well, all the health screenings that are being provided at Special Olympics here are free, like I, I told mm -hmm. uh, during the presentation. And it's actually thanks to the support of volunteers on the one hand that do the testing um, and a lot of many different uh, companies uh, that uh, support us with the testing material and so on. Uh, and of course, once uh, the athlete, if, if he's in need to go um, to, to specialist for further follow-up, that's of course something which is taken care of by uh, the, the parents of uh, the athlete. And luckily in Belgium, we do have a good yeah. health insurance system. So in that, I, that's a, a bonus uh, mm. for the Belgium athletes. Um. Also, of course, um, Special Olympics wants you know wants to be there for for everyone, poor or rich or or uh, whatever race. Um, and so my question is, with that as your goal, in in reality, is it um, is it easily doable to also um, uh, represent um, at least who grew up? Uh, in a in a less privileged household, is it harder to do that? Um, like you said, we we don't make a difference at Special Olympics for that. We we do offer all our uh, activities um, for all all different levels uh, of athletes. And in fact, to participate at national games, the, the, there is a little cost, but mm. those costs are um, are very low. And sometimes it's also that uh, in an institution, for example, if there's a club uh, and they're going to send five athletes to the games, that they do some kind of fundraising uh, to, to make sure they cover uh, that cost to participate. And the screenings, they are free. So for that, it's... Uh, it's easy, everybody can participate. That's great. Um, another question that came in is how, uh, how are our uh, volunteers trained for, uh, for the health screening regarding, for example, understanding people with, uh, with an intellectual mm -hmm. disability, for example? So um, in most of the programs, there's actually an on-site training before the start of the screening. So for example, as we start uh, screening on a Thursday at one o'clock, then actually in before noon, there is uh, someone um, that uh, explains the whole, the different test stations, but also give that explanation about the communication uh, with the people and how they should interact with the athletes that are coming. Mm -hmm. um, uh, someone also wondered if you could elaborate on um, how Special Olympics um, helps participants uh, improve their social and emotional skills. Yeah, I think it's just sport. 
mm. sport brings people together and and by doing sports together like Thibaut he does with with his uh his mates uh in unified sailing I think it speaks for se for itself that by doing that uh, you get um, the communication with other people and um, also the games. It's it's normally uh, without Corona. It's a big event um, with a lot of also in the evening we we organize animation. We have little groups that come and perform and also on those moments, uh, yeah, you see all the athletes mm. together. But not only athletes, it's athletes and volunteers, parents, coaches, it's all one big family, actually. That's beautiful. Um, one last question. Uh, it's, a, it's a personal question for Thibaut. Uh, what does his training program uh, look like? How does your training program look like? That's actually, uh, sowieso, as the world players are, train we, uh, probeer we four times per day to train. Oh per week op het water en daarnaast ook uh, fysiek twee keer naar de fitness of gaan lopen echt. Ja. Yeah. So he says when he's training for world games, it's four times a week that he tries to be on the water to really exercise his sailing skills. But on top of that, he's uh, two times a week is doing conditioning training like running and uh, physical weight I think ik krijg training ja. ook. So it's a combination of, of that in, in a year of world games or national games. All right. Well, those were all the questions uh, I got. Thank you very much uh, for answering them. Thank you very much for giving a very interesting presentation. Um, and thank you at home for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, see you next time.